Hey everyone, welcome back to another Unity VFX particle tutorial and today we're going to be working on this firefly trail sort of effect that you see here on the screen just following my mice around as I flail it around. Now the same technique can be used to create a lot of different effects where you have the mouse uh, just flailing around and particles just following it. So you can see right here a few of those examples that are included in my ultimate VFX particle pack. So this one's really neat. Uh, it's using particle force effectors. You've got this. You know, where the lightning's just following the mouse. Uh, what else? This one's really nice. I like it. Right, so you have this fire effect as well, which looks pretty cool. So using this exact same technique, if you just replace, for example, the textures and the, the shaders even sometimes, or the material, you can get these sort of effects going on. Now, for this one, I'm actually going to be just doing everything in play mode, so we can easily preview it, and you're going to be needing this follow mouse script. You can either make your own, or you can download it. I'm not going to be covering it in the tutorial, but I will leave a link for it in the description. So, without any further delay, let's get started. First of all, let's just take a look at the elements that go into making this effect. You have that little glow that's kind of pulsating in the center. You have those shards around the, part of, uh, around the mouse, and then as you move the mouse, you have this trail of particles that's left over. Some of the shards, uh, these little light balls, green and blue, and then you have this main trail with some noise on it that's just lurping between uh, blue and orange. So first of all, let's create a new empty game object. And let's disable this one because we don't want to see it. Okay, on this one, let's attach the follow mouse script that you can download or if you have your own. This one just has a speed and distance from camera setting. The speed just means uh, how quickly it follows the mouse around. So you can see up here, it's just smoothly interpolating. Now right now you're not going to see anything because there's nothing being drawn. But let's rename this to mouse follow, just so we can keep track of it. Now let's create a new particle system in that, and now you can see you know, the new particle system is just following me around. We want to adjust the shape to be actually nothing, because we're going to work on the trail first, okay? So you can see now it looks kind of like this laser that's just being shot in one direction. Uh, turn the start speed to zero, lifetime to maybe one, and now I just have these particles following around. Uh, let's turn the start size down to 0.2 for now, and the simulation space to world. On the emission module, let's change it from rate over time to maybe 10 over distance. So you can see now I've got this kind of uh, beeline effect going around. Let's modify the color over lifetime. So enable the module, open up the, the gradient, and we're going to have it zero here at both ends, and then fading out, or fading in rather, really quickly at the beginning and then fading away softly. So you get this effect. This alone actually looks kind of cool. But we're not done yet. Let's open up the renderer and switch out the default particle for a point sprite additive material with the texture already applied. I'm using textures from my ultimate VFX particle pack. If you have something similar, you can follow along that way, or you can actually even use for a lot of these just the default particle system if that's convenient for you. Okay. Let's uh, turn the start lifetime down a whole bunch and turn up the rate over life over distance to 25. So you get almost a smooth line. Let's make it, I don't know, Let's do some tweaking. 10? No. 15 might be better. Yeah, 15 is okay. And this is where it starts getting cool. So let's enable the noise module. This is a Unity 5.5 and over feature. And you can already see it's starting to take form. In this case, let's turn up the frequency, turn down the strength a little bit. And there you go. So you have the, the trail. Let's actually even, uh, actually, we'll leave the scroll speed at zero. But we will modify it so that the particle actually gets smaller over time, so it leaves a smaller uh, shrinking trail. So now we'll modify it so that the tail actually shrinks, the particles get smaller over time. To do that, we're going to enable the size over lifetime module. Just go over here and select one of the presets where it just gets smaller, and there you have it. So in this case, I actually want to make the start size bigger. That looks good. Next, we want this color to be changing over time. We don't always want it to stay white or any other single solid color. So we're going to go to the start color, set it to gradient. And this is going to animate the start color. So instead of the alpha, this time we're actually going to modify the color. Somewhere in the center, 
I'm going to set it to maybe a very deep red, right? So we have it going from red to white now over time, all on its own. Next, we want to hit maybe somewhere around, let's say, 35 and 65 and make it a little bit orange. We can just copy this, right click, and then paste. And then at the two ends, we're going to have a deep blue. Copy this, paste this. And there's somewhere around at 15 maybe and let's say 85, so they're mirrored. We're going to have something like a very light, light bluish, sort of milky blue color. And paste that. And so what you get is this. That's cool. We can turn the start lifetime down as well. So it's quicker to follow me around. Next, we're going to work on, okay, let's rename, just name this to color trail or something. Uh, next, what we want is the particle system that's going to be just always on, pulsating in the center. So for that, we're going to, let's just uh, duplicate this effect, Control D, and just toggle it on and off so it actually shows up. So now you can see that effect. That's actually pretty cool on its own, too. But uh, what we're going to do is disable noise, go to the start color. We wanted it to be a single solid start color, pretty orangish maybe something like that we'll see what it looks like in a second and the emission we don't want it over distance we actually want it over time and we can up the start lifetime to two so this is what we get okay you can see it pulsating a little bit let's turn up the start size that's a bit better uh let's set the simulation space to local better okay uh we're gonna modify the size over lifetime now so if we just go to hit the default one we can create a single key right here just edit it if you really want to be specific 0.5 value of one so it's right in the center there uh, add a key right here turn it down add a key right there turn it down and just if this turns off by itself we just have to toggle it on and off and it'll show up again okay not bad next i'm going to modify this there we go and Let's see. So we've got this going on so far. That's not too bad. For this, I don't want this uh, material. I don't want this texture specifically. I want something like a sprite or a point blur. Okay, so I get uh, this large. Um, I'm going to use a smaller one, I think. I don't think I need a large one. But I still want to use the additive, so let's see what we get. That's better. Larger size, maybe. For this one, I can just crank this up again. Okay, that looks pretty cool on its own. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Maybe turn the start size to 1.5. There's a lot of tweaking you can always do. I dislike tweaking too much in the tutorials just because it can be a huge time sink, but let's see where we get. All right, that looks good. Next, I want those little bubbly particles that are coming out. For that one, I'm going to, first of all, let's re just rename this to uh, Glow. And then just take the color trail, duplicate it, okay, toggle it on and off so we can just see it. And for this one, I'm going to turn the emission for the rate over distance, or the, yeah, down to maybe 2. Maybe increase the start speed to 0.5, start size to 1, and you can see what that makes. So that actually looks pretty cool on its own, too. You know what, maybe I'm just going to leave that. I like that. Okay, so we're just going to call this, uh, I don't know, bubbles. And we'll duplicate the bubbles, toggle it on and off so we get to see them. And for this one, I'm going to change it. I'm going to use the lens flare additive material that I have. We'll just use the one with the soft particle value of 1. Okay, so we get that. For this one, we don't want a gradient. We want a random between two colors. We want maybe some sort of blue and some sort of green. We also don't want it to be that bright. So I'm just going to turn this down to halfway. And let's see what we get. Not bad. I'm going to now modify the start size to be random between maybe 0.5 or maybe 0.25 even and 1. So we get this. And the start lifetime to 1. 
Actually, let's modify that so it's sometimes a little bit longer lived. Okay. That's not looking too bad. I can turn this down a bit. Right, so again, you can tweak this as much as you want, but that looks pretty good on its own. So I'm just going to call this Bubbles. Bubble Flares or something. Next, we want those little shards that are coming out from around, even when we're not moving the mouse. For that, I'm going to duplicate the glow. And let's see, toggle on and off. We'll call this Shards. Okay, and we can already see that. So... I'm going to select the shard additive material, this one right here, so we get that. Next, I'm going to enable the shape, make it a sphere, and turn the radius way down. Then turn the start speed up, so they got to get, get thrown a little bit. Turn the start size down to maybe 0.2. Those are really small. Turn the lifetime down to maybe 1 to 2. Okay, let's add some rotation, randomization, 360, 360, so negative 360 to 360 for full rotation. Let's turn up the emission to maybe 10. That's maybe a bit too much, maybe 5 would be better. Okay, let's turn up, well, let's um, randomize the start size from point zero 0.05 to point 0.2. Let's also randomize the start speed from 0.25 to 0.5. And start color needs to be a little bit brighter. More yellowish, that is. This could be actually smaller. It doesn't need to be that uh, big. And just move that out. So that's looking pretty good. We're going to duplicate this. Call it shards 2. And for these ones, I'm just going to use the longer shard, so this one right here. And just toggle it on and off, and so you get this. So you have the shards. Now the shards are also going to leave a small trail, so I'm going to turn on the rate over distance to 2, and set this to simulate in world space as well. Both of these set them to simulate in world space, so it actually leaves a trail like you see right there. And then I can also modify the start lifetime to be not as long. You have your shards there. Maybe make their emission a little bit more. Coming outwards from the center. Not exactly the center that way. So you have your shards like there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, is that everything? Let's disable this. Enable the original mouse follow. See if we missed anything. So again, with tweaking you can get the same effect. We're going to do something else now. I'm going to go back to the mouse follow. There is something I missed. I think uh, I was supposed to randomize the glow here. So I just want to quickly randomize the start rotation for the glow. It's not going to make too much of a difference. Now again, these are uh, particles from my Ultimate VFX particle pack, but if you've got similar textures, you can just follow along using those, or the default particles texture that's uh, with Unity, like this one right here. Right, so you can also just use that. You just have to mess with the sizes a little bit on your own. Okay. Maybe actually I don't like these bubbles. I think they're kind of in the way. This looks better, yeah. Okay, next I'm going to duplicate the bubble flares, and instead I'm going to use a twinkle texture. So this is going beyond what the original effect looked like. Again, enable, disable, so I can see it in play mode. Maybe emit like uh, four of these or something, and these are not going to be rotating. So... You get that sort of effect. Maybe make them eight, so there's a lot of them. And maybe make them spread out a bit more on their own. Right, so I think that covers a lot of what I wanted to show you. This is getting close to the final effect. Make it two again. So there you go. That looks neat. It looks all uh, sparkly and fantasy-ish. And that's how you create that. So now that we have this, I'm going to call this Twinkles real quick. Uh, maybe keep the bubbles, the original bubbles, but turn the opacity down to like 128 on both ends.
Let's see. So that's not too bad. That looks okay. Okay, so now I'm going to actually just save this as a prefab. You can just save it anywhere you want as a prefab. Maybe I'll just drag it, you know, down uh, here. And so now when I stop playing, I can just drag the prefab back in, disable the original. I've got my duplicate right here. I'll just reset the position. And now that I play it, I'll have that very same effect, as you can see right here. Let's just disable this one right here. Okay. So there you go. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, that about wraps up this tutorial. I've gone ahead and actually saved this effect that we just created as a prefab in my Ultimate VFX Particle Pack. Uh, it's going to be available in the next update. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see for future tutorials. Uh, this one, again, was based on a suggestion that someone left me, so I do take a look at those. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more awesome videos like this. Get creative, and yeah, bye.